meeting with your member of Congress, preparing for NC's 2019 Public Policy Day. Welcome to Washington. This is your chance to be an advocate in the 116th Congress. Are you attending the National Summit on Education Equity? Planning to attend public policy workshops and participate in Public Policy Day by visiting your congressional representatives? NAEP's Public Policy Day is held in the center of the seat of power, the nation's capital. Remember, your voice holds the power to inform and enlighten your congressional members and their staff. The 116th Congress is the most diverse Congress in American history. The Congressional Freshman Class of 2019 is the most racially and gender diverse group of representatives ever elected to the United States Congress. This Congress also boasts a number of firsts, from the first Native American Congresswoman to the first Muslim American Congresswoman. There are 127 women in the 116th Congress. 25 women in the U.S. Senate, and 102 women in the U.S. House of Representatives. This does not include four women territorial delegates. 106 women are Democrats, and 21 women are Republicans. Together, these women represent roughly 24% of all the seats in the United States Congress. In addition, the Congressional Black Caucus has 55 members. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus has 39 members, and the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus has 20 House members. These three congressional caucuses make up the Congressional Tri Caucus. Equity, diversity, and inclusion for everyone will be front and center issues for this Congress. Make sure you know the House and Senate Committee Chairs in the 116th Congress. Senator Lamar Alexander, Republican from Tennessee, is the chairman of the Senate Help Committee. Congressman Bobby Scott, Democrat from Virginia, is the chairman of the House Committee on Education and Labor. Know the key committees that impact education, CTE, STEM, and Title IX in both congressional chambers. In the Senate, we have the Senate Health, Education, Labor, and Pension, or Health Committee. The Senate Appropriations Committee, which includes the Subcommittee on Labor, Health, and Human Services, Education, and Related Agencies, also known as Labor HHS. The Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation, the Senate Judiciary Committee, and the Senate Rules Committee. In the House, we have the House Committee on Education and Labor, the House Appropriations Committee to include the Subcommittee on Labor, Health, Human Services, Education, and Related Agencies, also known as Labor HHS, the House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology, the House Committee on Judiciary, and the House Rules Committee. Also know the House and Senate CTE caucuses. Is your senator or congressperson a member? In the Senate, the Senate CTE caucus co-chairs are Senator Tim Kaine, Democrat from Virginia, and Senator Rob Portman, Republican from Ohio. In the House, in the Congressional CTE caucus, the co-chairs are Congressman Jim Langevin, Democrat from Rhode Island, and Congressman Glenn G.T. Thompson, Republican from Pennsylvania. Their congressional staff contacts are listed on this page. In this new 116th Congress, congressional due diligence counts. Gather information before your visit. Determine which members and senators you plan to visit. Secure the names of their scheduler, chief of staff, and education legislative staff member. Know their party affiliations and platforms. Remember to include key committee members in your outreach. 
read their bios and make note of shared commonalities. Know their committee assignments, caucus memberships, and key legislation they have introduced and or co-sponsored. Learn as much as you can about your congressional members' voting record and issues of interest. Become familiar with the opposition's views and position on the issues for which you are advocating. Be aware of sponsored, co-sponsored key language by the congressional member, and if you support it, thank them for their leadership when you meet. Be prepared to share a few successful stories and programs from your home state. Bring one or two pages of your organization's information to add to your NATE package to leave with your congressional member and staff. Request a meeting. Send a written request to your member of Congress to the attention of his or her scheduler. Because of security precautions, snail mail may delay your request. An email with an attached formal letter of request would be great. Copy the legislative staff person covering your policy issue. Make clear which issues you want to discuss. To help you, NAEP's Advocacy Toolkit contains sample letters and other information to help plan your visit. Copy yourself on all email correspondence to the Congressional Office. Follow up with a call to the scheduler to confirm receipt of your request and to schedule an appointment. If you are meeting with congressional staff, remember to get their names. If you are contacting a member or senator in your home state, let the scheduler know that you are a constituent. Be polite but persistent. Expect to make more than one call to arrange your meeting. Do you want to up the ante on actually seeing the congressional member? When you request the appointment, ask for an official photo with the congressional member or senator. Dress to do the people's business. Look and feel confident. Business attire is strongly encouraged. Suits, sport coats, and jackets are important. Save your casual clothing and chunky jewelry for evening receptions. Comfortable shoes are a must, but don't wear sneakers. Travel light, bring only what you need. Liquids like lotion, perfume, water, etc., are strictly prohibited in the Capitol Visitor Center. And remember, bring plenty of business cards. Congressional protocols. The red, blue, and gold round lapel pin is the 116th congressional pin. Each new Congress wears a newly designed congressional pin. Both Democrats and Republicans wear the pin. It is meant to help Capitol Hill police and members of Congress recognize each other among the hundreds of people on Capitol Hill. It is also meant to help you identify members of Congress. When the bells ring, they are headed to the Capitol to vote. While you may see your congressional member in the halls, keep in mind that when the bells ring in the congressional buildings, congressional members have between five and 15 minutes to get to the floor for a vote. While they are pleased to see you and will be polite, remember that the most fundamental part of their job is to vote. Please don't delay them. Security for congressional buildings. Prohibited items in the U.S. House of Representatives, U.S. Senate, and the Library of Congress buildings include firearms to include replica guns and ammunition, weapons, noting the list below, explosives, explosive devices, pointed objects to include but not limited to razors, box cutters, knives, knitting needles, tweezers, letter openers. Pens and pencils are permitted. Sealed envelopes and packages have a different level of restriction and you may be asked to open them. 
Building security for the U.S. Capitol Visit Visitor Center is much more restrictive. Before entering the Capitol Visitor Center, all visitors are screened by a magnetometer and all items that are permitted inside the building are screened by an X-ray device. Please review the list of items below because they are strictly prohibited. Know before you go. If you're going to the Hill on Wednesday, attend the NC Public Policy Workshops on Tuesday. Below are six of the eight workshops being conducted during the NC all around public policy. The U.S. Department of Labor's response to the executive order on the expansion of apprenticeships, navigating savvy advocacy, a congressional staff perspective, using research to inform state and federal policies, building relationships, and awareness with legislators, leveraging required federal policy data to rebuild trust with Black and Latino communities, toward equity and excellence, policy and practice implications for the nation's updated CTE law or Perkins 5, and diversity in apprenticeship policies which support affordable childcare and pre-apprentice programs. As an aside, there are two additional sessions on Thursday on the Higher Ed Bill and Title IX. NAEP's legislative priorities in the 116th Congress include reauthorization of the Higher Education Act, Making Education Affordable and Accessible Act, the Jumpstart Out of Business Supporting Students or Jobs Act, the College Transparency Act, the Cyber Security Skills Integration Act, the Reauthorization of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunities Act, which is up for reauthorization at the end of 2019, the Equality Act, and the Paycheck Fairness Act, which recently passed the House of Representatives and has been moved to the Senate. Some of NAEP's legislative priorities from the recent 115th Congress, which are likely to be reintroduced in this new Congress, include the Go to High School, Go to College Act, the Working Students Act, the Skilled Labor Education Act, Creating Quality Technical Educators Act, and the Faster Access to Federal Student Aid Act. After the prep, arriving at the Congressional Member's Office, remember to confirm your appointment the morning of or the day before the meeting. Thank the scheduler again for making the time. Arrive five to 10 minutes before your scheduled start time. Be prepared to meet anywhere that the member, senator, or staff can meet. That may be in the office, in the hallway, in a committee ante room, or even in the cafeteria. Schedules and space are always tight on Capitol Hill. Flexibility is key. Watch your sidebar conversations while you wait with colleagues. Staff listens to every word you say. Smile, introduce yourself, and start on a positive note. Give the member and the staff person your business card before the conversation begins. It helps them remember your name. Watch the clock. Be on time. That means arriving five to 10 minutes early and be prepared to wait as long as 30 minutes longer than the scheduled meeting time. Members and senators are often called to the floor to vote. So again, prepare to be flexible. If you go as a small group, determine who your spokesperson will be beforehand and let her or him lead the conversation. Focus on your main points and articulate your position clearly and concisely. Keep track of your time. Most meetings, run between 15 and 20 minutes. Do not allow the meeting to run over.
make your pitch. Thank the member or senator for voting in support of a priority issue. State NAEP's position on priority issues. If there is a clear ask to make, be concise. If you are advocating for a specific bill, reference the bill number or title. Explain your position with facts and use personal notes when possible. Let the member or senator understand the personal ramifications or benefits resulting from their actions. Ask for an explanation if you don't understand something or need clarification. Manage the conversation. Remember that the congressional member or staff's response won't always be clear. What is the person saying about the issue? What questions or concerns do they have that might be answered? Do not assume that the congressional member and or staff are familiar with the issues that you are bringing to their attention. Remember that you may be the first person to make them aware or have more details to share. Pay attention to their direct and indirect statements of support, interest, or opposition, and write them down. Approach the congressional member or staff in a manner that fosters the development of a long-term relationship. Last but not least, respond in a positive and courteous manner at all times, no exceptions. Wrapping up. Carry extra copies of information and leave materials that you bring for the member of Congress and or their staffs. Provide your business card at the start of the meeting and get the staff, staffer's business card. If they don't offer it, ask for it. Thank the congressional member and staff, especially the front office staff before you leave. You can never say thank you enough. After the visit, Write members, senators, and staff to thank them for their time. Remind them of anything they agreed to do. Include any additional information. Share your meeting results, insights, concerns with NAEP and your state delegation. Complete and return our congressional feedback form. Provide NAEP with the staff person's contact information and add it to your own listserv. Staying in touch. When you return home, schedule a follow-up meeting with the congressional member's district director. Let her or him know who you met with in DC, how the meeting went, and any steps from that meeting. Invite her or him to visit your facility for a first-hand look. Visit the member or senator's website regularly for upcoming events in your home district and organize a group to attend. Add your name to mailing lists to stay up to date on public events like town hall meetings and forums. Upload the congressional business cards you've collected to your database to ensure that they receive your newsletters, blogs, and other updates. Develop relationships by maintaining contact with congressional members in Washington, D.C., and in congressional district offices through letters, newsletters, calls, invitations, and visits. Nate feedback. Please complete and return the congressional feedback form after each congressional meeting. Print clearly. We have to be able to read it. Provide as much detail as possible, especially the staff contact. By documenting your meetings, you are helping Nate make informed policy decisions, develop effective policy strategy, identify congressional champions. Well, I think you're ready to walk the halls of Congress. Thank you for joining Nate's advocacy prep session. If you have any questions, please call or email me, Lisa Ransom, at lransom at napequity.org or 202-213-8618. See you in the nation's capital.